and the topic for discussion now is thyroid and thyroid various thyroid disorders thyroid is one of the important endocrine gland of the human body where the hormones released by it actually maintain the homeostasis of the body very much important for the basal metabolic rate and other things so we'll, let us discuss about various thyroid disorders both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism their clinical manifestations and their oral manifestations and how they actually been treated coming to thyroid thyroid uh, is the gland which is again present uh, just below the thyroid cartilage and uh, as we know it has two lobes which is connected by the isthmus so this is about the picture of thyroid and i'll not go much into detail of the anatomy there now coming to the thyroid system thyroid uh, gland is actually been stimulated by the hormones that are released by the hypothalamus especially the anti depitatory gland the hormones that have been released are tsh that is thyroid stimulating hormone and thyrotropin releasing hormone these hormones that uh, the thyrotropic releasing hormone from the hypothalamus will go and stimulate the anterior pituitary gland the trh will uh, stimulate anterior pituitary gland where it releases this tsh that is nothing but thyroid stimulating hormone this thyroid stimulating hormone will have its effect on the stimulating effect on the thyroid uh, gland which will result uh, in releasing two hormones that is nothing but t3 and t4 t4 is nothing but tetraiodo uh, thyronine or thyroxine and t3 is nothing but triiodo thyronine here what happens the important uh, uh, action of this thyroid hormones is nothing but it will lead to increased metabolism growth and development and increased catecholamine effect coming to various functions of thyroid thyroid has multi thyroid hormones are actually having multitude of functions and they some of them include maintaining the basal metabolic rate their effect on the plasma and liver fat vitamin metabolism in protein carbohydrate and fat metabolism and also on the body temperature coming to disorders of thyroid gland we have uh, this thyroid hormone either t3 or t4 they are being elevated in the uh, uh, plasma then it leads to hyperthyroidism in hyperthyroidism it can be because of graves disease or toxic nodular goiter thyroiditis or pituitary or ectopic tsh or thyroid carcinoma the most common clinical features is patient usually exhibit irritability they have proptosis of the eye or exophthalmos conjunctival edema can be seen here tremors and tachycardia patients usually have psychosis warm extremities and uh, palmar erythema patients usually Uh, in hyperthyroidism uh, they actually have patient hyperthyroidism they lose weight uh, and they have uh, they are intolerant to heat uh, and in this case they have weight loss also they lose the weight but they have excessive hunger okay and goiter can also be seen in these cases increased appetite behavioral change or restlessness muscle weakness gynecomastia breathlessness palpitations heat intolerance tall stature in children hyperactive active hyperactive children atrial fibrillation or tachycardia can be seen coming to oral manifestations they have wide eyes eye wide eyed staring and alveolar bone atrophy premature shedding of deciduous teeth can be seen accelerated eruption of permanent teeth and increased susceptibility oral infections coming to the radiographic features normally they have generalized loss of alveolar bone density here thyroid storm thyroid storm is nothing but there is uncontrolled hyperthyroidism patients usually have delirium elevated temperature and tachycardia coming to graves disease graves disease is again a form of hyperthyroidism in this what happens is it is actually an autoimmune in nature these auto antibodies are directed against the receptors for tsh so what happens tsh is not being uh, the thyroid stimulating hormone is not happening there on the is uh, are direct against those receptors so their thyroid stimulating hormone receptors are not working there on the surface of the thyroid cells there will be diffuse thyroid enlargement leading to clinical signs such as nervousness patients will have heart palpitations heat intolerance emotional liability and muscle weakness they will also have weight loss despite of increased appetite excessive perspiration tachycardia warm and smooth skin tremors and exophthalmos can be seen so what are the various investigations for hyperthyroidism t3 and t4 are elevated tsh is low uh, iodine 131 uptake is increased ECG shows tachycardia and arrhythmias, and you, uh, ultrasound will show diffuse goiter. How do we actually manage? It is with drug therapy, where carbamazole ten to twenty milligram per daily, potassium iodide, beta blockers, propyl thiouracil for hundred to two hundred milligrams eight hourly will be helpful in controlling this hyperthyroidism. Radiation to radiation and surgery in case of extreme hyperthyroidism. 
and coming to dental considerations usually they have adverse reactions with catecholamides especially epinephrine usually for one single dose it doesn't pose much problem but if patients have multiple uh, uh, multiple times of uh, injections then uh, epinephrine has to be diluted from 1 to 1 is to 1 lakh uh, times and then thyrotoxic crisis can be precipitated by any infection or surgical trauma so uh, uh, any uh, uh, if there is any dental ulnar infections antibiotic prophylaxis is must and in case of surgical trauma avoid much anxiety in these cases uh, thus thyrotoxic uh, the crisis can be uh, elimin eliminated. Now coming to hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is nothing but decrease in circulating T3 and T4. And this hypothyroidism has different manifestations. In infants it is called as cretinism. It is also juvenile mixed edema. Mix edema. And in adults it, are, it is called as mixed edema. Usually it is classified as primary and secondary hypothyroidism. Coming to primary hypothyroidism. It is disease affecting the thyroid gland itself. Here the congenital etiology of varied types again, it can be congenital because of agenesis of the gland, autoimmune condition where there is atrophic thyroiditis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, iodine deficiency, iodine is very much important for production of T3 and T4. So whenever patients have iodine deficiency, T3, T4 production is less in those conditions, post-surgical and post-irradiation of thyroid, any tumors of thyroid can also lead to primary hypothyroidism. So what are the causes of them? They are thyroid atrophy or congenital uh, conditions also. Now coming to various signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroid as we discussed thyroid hormones are uh, have effect on each and every body system and the signs of hypothyroidism include psychological symptoms include poor memory and concentration, poor hearing, on lungs they have shortness of breath, pleural effusion, hoarseness of voice is seen slow pulse rate, pericardial effusion, delayed reflex reaction, coldness, carpal tunnel syndrome, fatigue, patients usually have feeling cold nature, they have weight gain with poor appetite and constipation with ascites and in reproductive system it can lead to menorrhagia also. Cretinism, as we have seen hypothyroidism in children is called as cretinism, cretin means stupid. Okay, so these children which are suffering from hypothyroidism or cretinism usually have low IQ, they have retarded growth both mentally and physically. Stunted growth is also seen in these cases. It is usually due to congenital hyperthyro uh, hypothyroidism and we also see several developmental abnormalities associated with it. Neonatal jaundice, hoarse cry and feeding problem can be seen in these cases. Generalized edema of the body. Pod belly or protruding abdomen is one of the common feature where fat from limb is mobilized to abdomen. So there is centripetal distribution of fat and sparse hair is seen, brittle fingernails and absence of sweat glands are the common clinical manifestations. Coming to oral manifestations or orofacial manifestations to be precise, patients usually have shortened base of the skull, retraction of bridge of the nose, there will be delayed eruption and exfoliation of the teeth, both delayed eruption and delayed shedding. Underdeveloped mandible is a common feature among them. Patients have puffy lips, they have enlarged tongue. This enlarged tongue usually is protruded outside, so this leads to malocclusion. Now we have another condition of hypothyroidism in adults, which is causing also called as myxoedema, and this is accumulation of mucopolysaccharides in subcutaneous tissues. Here what happens is there will be lowered metabolic rate, patients usually are lethargic. They will have coarse and dry skin, huskiness of the voice can be seen, generalized edema and moon's face are the common features. Patients also manifest with constipation, weakness, bradycardia, intolerance, cold intolerance and hypothermia. Other oral manifestations that have been associated with myxoedema include usually myxoedema effects soft tissues when compared to heart tissues okay they have macroglossia edema of the face also called as moon's face lips are usually puffy thickened and protruding inverted they have retarded condyla growth like micrognathia and open bite retarded eruption of deciduous teeth is also seen in these cases eruption of permanent teeth is retarded there will be high incidence of enamel hypoplasia enlarged pulp chambers and deloid exfoliation of deciduous teeth. Now coming to various radiological features that are present. Patients usually manifest with malocclusion. The mandible is usually underdeveloped. Lamina dura thinning is usually seen in these cases. Delayed dental eruption, short tooth roots, 
external root resorption and delayed closure of fontanelles and epiphyses is commonly encountered. When coming to the investigations, usually T3 and T4 are low, TSH is elevated and uh, TSH is also low here and serum and chole serum cholesterol is high, ECG uh, shows bradycardia. What is the treatment for hypothyroidism is supplying T3 and T4 again. So L-thyroxine can be given 1 to 3 mg per day. And in case of thyroid, medication has to be taken for lifelong and it has not, it should not be skipped in between. Coming to dental considerations, uh, there will be exaggerated responses to CNS depressants, sedatives and analgesics. Hence, drug interactions has to be checked before uh, prescribing drugs. Mixed edematous coma can be precipitated by CNS depressants. And this will actually uh, uh, take care of the dental considerations while treating the patients with hypothyroidism. So this is about thyroid disorders, both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Let me add a note on acromegaly, where just because of pituitary gland excess, especially in adults. Here what happens is, we, as we know, pituitary gland has anterior pituitary, intermediate and posterior pituitary. And one uh, important hormone is growth hormone that has been secreted by anterior pituitary. So whenever there is excessive growth hormone, after fusion of epiphyseal plates, it leads to acromegaly. Increase in width rather than length of the bones is a common feature of acromegaly. So this is a picture showing a classic facial features of acromegaly where we can see protruded mandible, elongated faces can be seen, Protru uh, there can protuberance of the, uh, uh, we can see protuberance of uh, supraorbital uh, rings. These are the hands of uh, the acromegaly patients which are usually larger. They are, these hands usually have duffy in nature, they are duffy in nature and sweaty hands can be seen in these cases and the length of the hands are usually larger here. Now coming to oral manifestations of acromegaly, the mandible shows prognathism, accelerated dental eruption is seen in these cases. We also see macroglossia and uh, proclination of teeth with diastema and flattened hard palate. Lips are puffy and protruding, poor fitting dentures are seen usually in these cases. Enlargement of maxillary and frontal sinuses are also seen. Coming to radiographic features, normally supraeruption of teeth is seen to maintain that occlusal plane. Spacing between teeth is seen. Uh, we also see roots of posterior teeth often enlarge as a result of hypocementosis. There will be jaws enlarged and lengthening of dental arches. Cortical plates of the mandible show thickening. Ballooning of cella tarsica can also be seen. And paranasal sinuses, especially the frontal sinus, is usually enlarged in these cases. Now coming to the investigations, classical clinical findings are present in case of acromegaly. Along with it, radioimmunoassay for growth hormone levels will show elevated growth hormone. Skull x-ray shows large cella tarsica or ballooning of cella tarsica. And pituitary tumors might be detected in case when uh, CT scans are taken. How do we manage them? So medical management can be by the help of stomatostatin analogs such as octreotid or bromocryptin 15 to 30 milligrams daily. Transpenoidal root surgical uh, therapy can also be done in case of pituitary uh, tumors and radiotherapy can be our last uh, source of uh, uh, therapy here. So this is all about acromegaly, its clinical features and how do we investigate for them in short. So this ends with, so the presentation ends now with acromegaly and this is all about various uh, endocrine disorders. Thank you.